Well, thanks for that reminder, Seth, that, that it was al already 40 years ago. Um, it's, it's changed immensely. You know, when we first started, it was uh, simply stand over the bike and pull it up, and if you had an inch or two between the bike and your body, that was about right. And then on the upper body, um, we, we, we used uh, what, what we now call the iometer. And, and again, some people don't know that. We use the goniometer now to measure angles, and the iometer is using your thumb to kind of measure the angle. So even though we are very experienced cyclists, we joke about the iometer, but it's the way that we did it in the industry, and, and unfortunately some people still do it that way. So it's changed immensely because it's now medically based and scientifically based and, um, and based on the fact that we look at somebody, their goals on the bicycle as well as what their body has been through and what's different about their individual body from anybody else's before we put them on the bike. Well, it's been, it's been quite a bit. Um, back in the early 80s, we were trained on a system called the Fit Kit. And, and the Fit Kit is a series of measurements that measure the body and therefore say that um, you should be on this size bike with this height of handlebar and this length of top tube. The, the fallacy there is that somebody can be 20 years old and somebody else can be 60 and their flexibility can be substantially different as well as their injury history. So although that was a great starting point, we found ourselves after doing it saying, yes, but you're going to be racing, so we might be a little bit lower in the front end or a little bit longer. And conversely, if somebody was doing a cross-country tour, it may be the opposite. We may be a little higher in the front or a little shorter for a more comfortable position. So um, what I've done for training beyond the fit kit is um, we wanted a brand called uh, Serata right around uh, 2000. And they mandated that we went to school at a cost of $2,500 approximately per person. And really didn't feel I needed it because of my experience in the reading I had done. And um, bottom line is, after one day, I was embarrassed at how little I really knew about how the human body interfaces with the bike. So I did their basic course. I then did their advanced course. And each course is about a 32-hour course. And um, then they had one, if you will, graduate course that we went back for to, to talk about other aspects of fitting with fitters who'd been through both of those. Um, then interesting, about a couple years later, Specialized uh, came out with a, uh, a, the importance of fit and hooked up with a guy out of Boulder, Colorado named um, Dr. Andy Pruitt, who runs the Boulder, Colorado Clinic for Sports Medicine. Well, as it turns out, Andy had been good friends with Ben Serrata, so the philosophy at the Serrata School and the Specialized School were identical. And um, so I then went to their basic course, which again is about a 32-hour course, their advanced course. Andy, being in the medical pro profession, believed in certification, uh, meaning that anybody can go through the courses, but did they retain anything from the course? So um, started a certification program of fitters, and I was fortunate enough to be asked to um, in the first course, and was uh, one of the first eight in the world certified by Andy, who sat there and watched me do a fit. There are now about 80 some worldwide who have who have passed this course. In addition to that. Um, um, I also went to the three first um, symposiums of bike fitters from around the world where, we, where uh, academia shared um, knowledge that they had uh, amassed through research about the human body and about, per, for instance, um, spin on a bike or ideal length crank, all that sort of stuff. So that was really interesting and provoked further thought. And then um, I was really fortunate in that um, body geometry fit was at that point going worldwide and it was going into Australia and Andy needed to go down there to help teach some courses to the first people and I was fortunate to get to go to assist him in teaching it as, as his helper of course. And did that for three weeks one time, so three sets of, of students and then got to go two years later for two more sets of students.
Well, it's substantially different in, than most methods in a couple ways. Um, first of all, it's similar in that we do a, a pre-fit interview to find out the goals and aspirations of the athlete and what your history has been on a bike. But what's different are two things. Um, and it's the pre-fit assessment, which is over 20 steps that we go through to say what's different about your body than anybody else's. And that would involve things like foot structure, knee structure, flexibility in all the major muscle groups in the lower body, uh, whether you're symmetrical um, from side to side, a leg length difference, and ranges of motion in key areas. So we look at all that before we get somebody on the bike, which allows us to predict what we may see on the bike and how to remove stress from areas of injury which we would also go over in the prefit. In addition to that, um, the biggest difference um, as far as being on the bike is most systems deal with just what we call the X and Y plane, which is looking at a sigital or a side view of somebody and saying how high should the saddle be, how high should the bars be, and where should each of those be horizontally. So that's the X and Y plane. The Z-plane is taking somebody and looking at it straight on and saying how does the foot, knee, and ankle stack. And the reason that's so important is to support the foot is because we're asking athletes to ride with approximately a 90 cadence. So over an hour ride, that's over 5,000 revolutions. If an athlete rides 10 hours a week, obviously that's 50,000 revolutions a week. And so cycling can be a sport of repetitive repetitive injuries. So if we can, we can eliminate or reduce that by making sure that the, the person is what we call neutral on the bike to their body style. We use primarily um, what we call a size cycle. What a size cycle is, is a nearly infinitely adjustable bike so that we can, we can um, adjust it as we go so the athlete can feel the um, result of a slightly different position on the bike. In reality, equipment isn't what's important about the fit. Um, what's most important is how educated the fitter is because it's just like I can go to a, a place that sells tools for woodworking. But because I buy the same tools a master carpenter would have, it doesn't mean that the cabinets are going to turn out the same. So similarly in bike fit, the education of the bike fitter and how much he's been able to apply it or she is very, very important. We also use here um, a, a thing called CompuTrainer which measures um, how much power you're producing but more importantly where that power is coming from. Measures your equity of effort from right to left side of the body and we can extrapolate from that uh, which muscle groups are, are working hardest because the goal in a good fit again is to be neutral and involve or recruit as many muscle groups as possible throughout the lower body. Well, um, yeah, it can benefit riders different ways, and that comes in in the interview that we start with of what their goal is. So if somebody's going cross-country, well, comfort is going to be more important to them than speed in most cases because they're going to be on the bike day after day. Um, I, in fact, did a, a fit for somebody just a few months ago who, who had been a recreational bike biker, never had a fit, but rode 1,500 miles a year and was going to do a cross-country tour with the group and went through the fit on him and he had issues with saddle uh, because he was slightly off center on the bike and um, that was because of a leg length difference. We, we stacked the cleat, got him sitting, all of a sudden his saddle issues went away and therefore his upper body was more comfortable. So, so that's a fairly typical story. And the, the ones that are really rewarding as a fitter are people who have had injuries and are frustrated with not being able to what they do on the bike. And a woman comes to mind that I fit about a year ago who drove from out of town down near the Detroit area because she, she really loved riding but couldn't stand being on the bike for more than about 20 miles. She had been in an auto accident and had a problem with her elbow surgery couldn't straighten it, didn't have a full range of motion, so she was only here. That caused her to sit sideways on the bike, which caused saddle issues, which caused upper body neck issues. 
And bottom line is, is what we did was we, we supported her foot correctly, and after we did that, we made the cockpit on the bike asymmetrical to match her asymmetrical body. And she sat straight on the bike and has since been doing her favorite rides, which are metric entry, so about 60, a little more than 60 miles. So that's, those are real rewarding. the interaction with the customers and and it's really cool to turn a new cyclist on to our sport that's really fun and the other thing that's fun about fitting is somebody who's been riding 20 years to and that's never been fit that comes in and goes oh, I should have done this 20 years ago just by calling the store I work primarily out of the Jenison store and, uh, you know, if you call that number there, um, we always have my fit schedule. You can either talk with me directly, which is great, but if I'm not here, uh, the staff here knows how to schedule the fit and, and schedule at a time that's mutually agreeable.